All right, in this video, we're going to talk about anaerobic threshold. There we go. And if you watched my last video, we talked about lactate threshold. And they are different. Um, lactate threshold is and anaerobic threshold is a way to determine when the anaerobic system is kicking in to supply some of the energy needs. So let's say we're training and we've been training for about 10 minutes and it starts to get really intense. Well, there's a point at which the anaerobic system is going to kick in to help supply the energy needs. And so lactate threshold, the last video we talked about, is a more invasive way of determining when the anaerobic system is kicking in. And anaerobic threshold is a non-invasive way of determining if the anaerobic system has kicked in. So that's probably the best way to separ separate them out. So this is non-invasive, whereas lactate threshold is invasive. You might ask, well, what does invasive mean? It just means that we're using some sort of treatment that, here's a good example, a blood test is invasive. We have to break the skin and draw out blood. Non-invasive, here we're just measuring expired CO2. And it's a little bit more complicated than that, but I'm just going to leave it at that. We're trying to look at how much CO2 is being expired, and that can give us an estimate. And I'm trying to keep it pretty basic. So these are all ways of telling when the anaerobic system kicks in essentially or starts to supply energy you know from our other videos that our chemical energy we're referring to is ATP adenosine triphosphate so I'll try to show you this down at the bottom but let me first kinda tell you what I'm talking about when I'm talking about anaerobic threshold what's gonna happen is O2, we're not going to take in enough O2. So there's not going to be enough O2 in the body because intensity, so our intensity has gone up. Let me draw that up here. So intensity has gone up. And our O2, there's not enough. So maybe it hasn't declined, but there's just not enough of it to supply enough energy needs relative to the intensity. So what's going to happen is if there's not enough oxygen, lactic acid is going to start to build up. And so CO2, carbon dioxide, is also going to increase because our body is going to try to buffer this lactic acid. So as we start to buffer lactic acid, more CO2 is released. We start to breathe harder to try to get rid of it. But we may not be breathing hard enough because of the intensity to get enough oxygen. So I hope that kind of sums it up for you. And when I'm talking about buffer or buffering capacity, I'm talking about sodium carbonate, which is bacon soda, and it's found in the blood. So it's going to decline. The more we work out, the higher the intensity, the more the sodium bicarbonate is going to drop as lactic acid increases. There's a point at which it can no longer buffer it, and we talked about that la last time. So, and that was the onset of blood lactate accumulation. I'm going to spill it all out since I spilled it out in the last video. 
there's a point at which that that increases and you're going to fatigue because you don't have enough sodium bicarbonate in the blood to buffer it so you can only go so long um, using anaerobic energy uh, production so let's uh, draw this out and this time just like last time I'm going to use some heart rates So this is heart rate right here. So heart rate is increasing. So that means intensity is increasing. And this will be time down here. So we're doing this over time. So we've got 5, 10, 15, and 20 minutes. So let's say our anaerobic threshold is right here. That's supposed to be a straight line. <laughs> Let me try to draw that out as straight as I can. So it's at about 160. So we start to work out. Let's just say we do steady state workout. So we're just doing a steady state workout. And let's say we stay around 150, somewhere right around there, but we would never really go above our anaerobic threshold. Well, the body can supply enough aerobic energy or can produce enough aerobically that we can sustain that. But really the best thing we should do, and even for steady state exercise, even for like running a marathon, it's good to do interval training so that we get above that anaerobic threshold. So every once in a while we get above it. And what we want to do over time is shorten this rest interval and lengthen that time that we sustain it so that we can improve our anaerobic threshold. Because what that's going to do is Let's say the limit was right around here at 160. So you see I, I've drawn that line in. I'm going to draw a different color here. So we were at 160 here at our start point. What that could do for us is push up our anaerobic threshold. Let's say that's 170. So now when we do our steady state exercise, this is a different time. So we're doing our steady state exercise. We could get all the way up to, let's say, 165 and hold that while we're running our marathon or whatever event. And as long as we don't go above our anaerobic threshold, we can supply enough energy aerobically. So that's how interval training is mixed into this. So over time, you start to, by doing interval training and, and keeping these high heart rates, your body starts to produce more sodium bicarbonate. So that way you can buffer more lactic acid and you can stay up here at these intervals for longer periods of time. You shorten your rest interval and you lengthen your high portion of your interval, the highest portion. So that way you'll start to, your body will start to store more sodium bicarbonate in the blood so that you can last longer and eventually that will improve your anaerobic threshold by moving it up when we're talking about heart rates. I could have been talking about percentages of VO2 max. So could be training at percentages of my VO2 max but I'd have to know what that is. For the average person knowing your heart rate is much easier and it's just as useful. So and it's more practical because you can just wear a heart rate monitor and eventually start training at higher heart rates by doing interval training. Now let's draw one more thing out here. I just want to draw one more chart so this makes sense. Let's talk about blood lactate. So I could draw this out just a, a different way. So let's say this is 2, 4, 6, 8. It could go a little higher so we're talking right now millimoles per liter so this is lactic acid and we're going to measure it in millimoles per liter that's an L and down here we've got heart rate so as we start to train These lower heart rates we're having no problem, but any time we get above our anaerobic threshold, we said it was 160 last time, once we start to go above it, then 
the onset onset of blood lactate accumulation happens and we're eventually going to fatigue. So we're going to have to drop our heart rate back down and recover or too much lactic acid is going to build up and fatigue. And again, I could draw this one out in percentages of VO2 max if I wanted to. But again, heart rate is easier to measure in the real world because not there's very few of us that have metabolic carts just sitting in our garage where we can go out and measure our, our VO2 max. So I hope this helped explain anaerobic threshold and compare it to lactic acid or lactate threshold. Uh, essentially lactate threshold is just another way of measuring when the aerobic system kicks in and, or the anaerobic system kicks in and the anaerobic threshold is the same thing it just but it's non-invasive so there are methods of measuring when the aerobic system kicks in and let me just show you that on this chart so anytime we went above our anaerobic threshold the anaerobic system has had to kick in. So each time we went above this, so you see for this interval, each time we went above that line when we were training, the anaerobic system had to kick in to supply the ATP force. So I hope that kind of compared the two. Um, they essentially measure the same thing, just one's non-invasive, so the anaerobic threshold's non-invasive, and the lactate threshold is an invasive measurement. We have to do some sort of blood test. So I hope you enjoy this video. I'll see you in the next one.